Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at people reveal creepy things that happen to them after 3 a.m. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. My dog was going ballistic at our side door. I yelled for her to come to me, but she refused to leave it and kept barking, which was really unusual behavior for her. As I come down the steps, I see a big dude standing on the other side of the door, fiddling with the knob and trying to get in. My heart stopped. I asked what he wanted and he paused and looked at me surprised, as though he hadn't realized I could see him. I wouldn't have been able to if I hadn't been on the steps. He said he was looking for somebody. I tried to sound hard and said I already called the cops. He called me a name and turned and ran off into the night. What scared me the most was he knew I was awake and he knew the dog was in there and he still tried to come in. That only tells me he had a plan for dealing with us or was crazy enough to not care. I'm honestly just surprised they had a conversation. Like I'm surprised he didn't run when he heard their voice, you know. He was still there. He even gave an excuse as well. I'm looking for somebody in your house. What did he think the person was going to do after he said that? Did he think they were just gonna be like, oh really, you're looking for a person? Who? What's the name? I'll help you. You can come inside, you know, I'll help you. <laughs> That's funny. I was starting to fall asleep on my couch sometime after 2.30 a.m. when I heard a cell phone go off in my basement. It was one of those old Nokia ringtones. I live alone. Oh, I froze in place on couch and didn't really know what to do. I wondered if I had just imagined it since I was in that half awake, half asleep state, but I'm sure I heard it. The next day, I went down there with a flashlight to scope it out. The only reason I ever have to go into my basement is to relight the furnace. There is a door down there that leads outside to the street and I live right next to a highway. The only thing I can think of is that someone snuck in through the door and left. What? There's a door that leads to the outside street so you can just come in from the outside street? That sounds dangerous. It's always scary when you're home alone and then you hear a noise. Like no matter what the noise is, you hear like a plate move or something, that's scary. Talking about that, when I was a kid at night, I always heard plates moving. Like I'm not sure if it was just placed wrong on the dish rack, but I just always heard it like clanking. It was weird, okay. I don't know, maybe someone was secretly eating at our place. <laughs> But I always just assumed, oh, the plates are falling again. <laughs> like it was something normal. But now that I think about it, that's weird. I fell asleep next to a guy. I woke up after an intense episode of sleep paralysis with a weird dream hallucination of this demon girl crawling across me. He looked peaceful, so I didn't wake him. The next morning, he described the exact same dream along with sleep paralysis. I never told him I had the dream. Too weird. <gasps> what? They had the same dream. Sleep paralysis honestly just sounds so scary. I've never experienced it and I don't ever want to experience it. <sighs> scary. I know some people get it really often and some people just never get it at all like me. I'm actually curious as to why some people get sleep paralysis. Is it because they're like stressed or like they haven't been getting enough sleep? When I was about five or six I woke up and saw an old woman standing in the doorway of my bedroom. She didn't say anything, just looked at me silently and stood there but I was filled with the most horrible sense of dread I've ever felt in my life. I was absolutely terrified of this woman and I hid under my covers and would peek out every few minutes to see if she was there. After what felt like hours but was probably only 15 minutes, she was gone when I looked. I ran into my parents' room crying and my dad searched my room and the rest of the house but didn't find anyone. I slept with them for the rest of the night. I never did find a good explanation for what I saw, but a lot of other things happened in that house before we moved a few years later. Scariest thing I've ever seen to this day. Yo, I believe when people say houses are haunted, you know. I woke up to the sounds of two people burgling my house, jumped out of bed, grabbed my bat and went to investigate. As soon as they heard me, they legged it. I then phoned the police. As soon as I got off the phone, I went into shock. Sitting on my bedroom floor in my boxes, clutching a bat in case they come back. They never did, but that was three years ago. And still to this day, if I hear even the slightest sound at night, I'm fully alert and waiting for it to happen again. The paranoia has stayed with me since that evening. Oh, I'll be paranoid too if I still lived in the same house. Because then I'll just be scared that they're going to come back for like revenge or something, you know. Even though they didn't do anything but you know you know what if what if they come back and screw with you that is scary this happened when i was an eight-year-old kid sleeping peacefully i don't know why but i woke up it was weird no sounds no movement 
Everyone was asleep and it was silent. I wasn't dreaming at all. I just woke up out of the blue. Suddenly, I heard footsteps outside my window and someone started knocking on the window. The window had wooden doors at that time. I turned the lights on. I was scared. I stared at the window and out of nothing, this person started making ghost sounds going, oh. I let out the biggest dad ever and my father just jumped off bed and I heard someone running. My dad went outside with a baseball bat. No one was there. My neighborhood had some abandoned houses where junkies would usually stay. I guess it was checking if someone was in the house because a few years later, we had two occasions where two guys tried to enter our house. One was scared by a random street cleaner, bless him, and the other one got his butt kicked by my mother. What the? That is the creepiest thing ever. You wake up and then you hear someone making ghost noises outside your window. Oh. Why was that person making ghost sounds though? Like, what, 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 what? What was he trying to do? Oh, it's a ghost. I fell asleep and woke up to the door being bashed in and doorbell being smashed. In my sleepiness, I thought it was my sister after forgetting her key after taking the dog out. I didn't realize it was like 2 or 3 a.m. I got up when I thought nobody was getting up to let her in. I went down and opened the door. This barely dressed girl fell in on top of me. I grabbed her and shoved her out the door, out of the porch and into the arms of a guy standing in our front garden. I blinked and looked at them and the taxi still waiting outside. The girl was completely intoxicated and the guy was so confused. I told him wrong house and he proceeded to drag the girl over the low garden wall. We had a small gate and I didn't seem to use it and got into the taxi and left. To this day, my dad always brings it up. He thinks they were scoping out the place to rob the place and that was their cover to get someone to open the door. Whoa, but... If their plan was to rob the place, they would have robbed it, right? Because the guy did open the door. I think she was just really drunk and got into the wrong house. I think so. <laughs> because they left in the end, right? They didn't try anything. That's odd. I'm just shocked that he didn't even try to check who it was, you know? He just assumed it was his sister. Like, he didn't even look out. Jeez, that is dangerous. <laughs> I hope this guy learned his lesson to now always check before opening the door, okay? I'm kind of concerned for him. At the time, I had a bedroom on the top floor of the house with a skylight right above my head. I love that skylight. You could see the stars and the moon and the occasional meteor. Anyway, one night around 3 a.m., I was awoken by the most weird noise and I could see through the window and that the trees outside were dancing in the wind. Suddenly, a blinding light came through the skylight and the whole room was filled with blue Jewish light. What? I had no idea what was going on. End of the world? Jesus coming to get me? Then I realized the noise was a helicopter and the light was one of the searchlights they use. I know those are common in cities but I live in a rural area. The light clicked off. The helicopter flew away. If that was me, I would have thought it was an UFO trying to take me, okay? The next morning, I hear from a sheriff's deputy that a man had broken into a house a mile or so away, had injured the homeowner, then had run off into the night. So they were searching the woods and nearby farms with a helicopter and light. Oh my gosh, that would freak me out, honestly. Imagine waking up to that. Helicopters are loud, okay? They're scary when they're close. I had my tonsils removed and during the healing process, I woke up in the middle of the night choking on my own blood oh that is scary oh that's like a horror movie man it was december 2010 my cousin who lives in san francisco had invited my younger brother and i to go and visit he had just recently gotten married and he wanted us to meet his new wife so we decided to go he pays the tickets we pack up and by sundown we're all ready to leave the next morning we fall asleep Suddenly, I wake up. My dad is sitting at the foot of my bed, shaking me awake and calling my name. I'm thinking he's about to ask if you were ready to go. No. Apparently, a woman had knocked at the door that morning. She was wearing all black and she looked, according to my father, very sketchy. It was about 3 a.m. when she knocked on the door and asked my father, does Tim live here? Tim will be my name for the remainder of the story. Oh, okay. So they made up a name for themselves to remain anonymous. Okay. So my dad just freaked out. How does she know my son, he wonders. He probes a bit further. How old is he? She gives him what my exact age at the time. My dad freaks out a bit more. None of us know who this woman is. And here she is spouting off information about me. Fine, then what's his last name? This apparently stumps her. And she takes out her phone to call someone. Give me a moment. Huh? She says walking away from the door. My dad just eyes her skeptically from afar. Suddenly she gets back into her car and drives away without another word. 
what the heck? So she knows his uh, first name and his age and she knows where he lives. What? That's so odd. What was she trying to do? He then began suspecting I had ordered some prostitute. I asked him why I would ever do a thing like that. I then suggested it was perhaps a prank from one of my friends, but I didn't have any friends that would do something like that. So here we have no idea who this woman is or why she knew my name. Keep in mind it is currently 4am in the morning. Our flight leaves at 10am. We wake my brother up, which is the dumbest mistake we have ever made, and tell him the news. Somehow he gets scared. He was already nervous about flying to begin with. Now we have this mystery woman chasing us. He declines to fly that morning. My blood boils because I really wanted to go. I try with every effort on my part to try and convince my brother to still go. Then my dad chimes in and agrees that maybe we shouldn't go. He was paranoid that the lady was keeping an eye on us. I ask him how are we important? What would she need us for? My dad leaves for work and now I'm stuck trying to reconvince my brother to go. I didn't want to go without him. I call up my cousin and tell him the news. He tries his best to convince my brother to go anyway. No luck. So we end up not going. That Christmas, my family did nothing, all because someone was at the wrong place at the wrong time. So we still have no idea what she was there for. No way it was the wrong place though, because she got his name right and his age right and she got his address right. That's creepy. I'm so curious though, like what did she want? You know, like she was shook by the last name. She was like, oh. Last name? I didn't think it that far into the last name. Bro, back. I'll give you the last name soon. <laughs> when I was about 10 years old, my brother and I were home alone one night while my parents went out for a few hours. We're both sitting in the living room, relaxing, when all of a sudden we hear a belly audible voice from down the hall. We both just looked at each other and froze, making sure we both heard it, but were too scared to check it out. A couple minutes of silence went by, then suddenly we heard it again. Only this time we heard it more clearly because we were paying more attention. It was a voice but there was something weird about the way it sounded and we couldn't understand it, almost like it was speaking some kind of gibberish. My brother got up and stepped into the hallway. I reluctantly followed. Hello? <laughs> he called out after a moment of listening for movement. <laughs> Yo, this reminds me of horror movies when they know someone's in the house and they're like, hello? Is there someone here? Hello? <laughs> it's as if they want the person to be like, Peekaboo, yes, you found me, surprise. Nothing. We carefully walked further down the hallway to where we heard it and looked around. No signs of anyone. We looked around a bit more and then started to walk back into the living room. When suddenly we heard it again right behind us, making me jump. It's screwing with you guys. But we realized it didn't sound like a person talking inside the house. It was almost like it was coming out of a walkie talkie or something. Like when there aren't any low or high frequencies in a sound and still it was speaking in some weird language I couldn't place. We looked at each other, now more puzzled than scared. But my kid brain started coming up with all sorts of creepy explanations. Maybe there is someone in the house and they left the walkie talkie out somewhere and an accomplice was communicating with them from outside, asking if we were alone so they could come in and sack the place. We kept looking around the area and were completely stumped as to what was producing the sound. When it happened again and we realized it was coming from directly above where we were standing. We looked up and saw the fire alarm with a small flashing red light. It was trying to tell us to change the battery, but the language was set to French. Bro! It was the fire alarm, oh my god. <laughs> oh. I would have ran out the house before I figured out it was a fire alarm, you know? I would have freaked out. What the heck? Man, that is creepy. <laughs> Can you imagine being so scared and then in the end to find out you were scared because it was a fire alarm warning you to change the battery? Jeez. <laughs> it was so intense and then it was just a fire alarm, you know, no big deal. Well, that's it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are. And as always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.